Welcome to our review on fitness and health. First thing we need to understand here are the two definitions. So if we're talking about someone's fitness, what we're referring to there is their ability to do physical activity. If we're referring to someone's health, we're talking about if they've got diseases present. So what you'll find is being fit and healthy aren't actually mutually exclusive. You can have one without the other. So for example, if you've got someone like Usain Bolt, he's obviously very fit because he can run very fast, but if he's got the flu, he's not healthy. So just make sure you understand the difference between fitness, your ability to do physical activity, and being in good health, being free from disease. There are a variety of ways that we can actually measure someone's fitness levels. So we can have a look at their stamina, which is kind of like their endurance. We could look at their strength. We could test their flexibility or their agility. We could look to see how fast they are, so their speed. And we can also look at their cardiovascular efficiency, which is looking to make sure their heart's efficient and that they've got a normal blood pressure. Now, in order to measure some of those, we're going to need some specialist equipment like blood pressure monitors. But for others, they're very simple to test with very minimal equipment. Next, we come on to look at one of the big causes of death in the UK, which is heart disease. So if we're looking at the main cause of people dying early, then it's going to be heart disease in the United Kingdom. Now, there are a few risk factors here, so that if you are a smoker, or if you've got high blood pressure, if you eat a lot of saturated fat in your diet, or if you eat a lot of salt in your diet, all of those are risk factors for heart disease. So that means they're going to increase the chance of you possibly developing it. In order to measure someone's blood pressure, we need to look at two things. We need to look at the pressure which is generated when the heart contracts, and that's called the systolic pressure. And we need to have a look at the pressure generated when the heart is relaxed, the diastolic pressure. Now, when you get a blood pressure measurement, you're going to have two numbers. So the first one is your systolic pressure. And the second one is the diastolic pressure. So I've given you an example at the top there, 120 over 80. And the units for blood pressure are millimetres of mercury, MMHG. And that just refers back to the original blood pressure devices that we used that actually used to use mercury in a tube. And it would measure just the distance it travelled. But the first number is always your systolic, and that should be the higher of the two. And then your diastolic is the second number there. What you'll find is if you actually carry out exercise, then during exercise, your systolic pressure increases. However, when you finish exercising, then your systolic pressure will decrease again. Next thing we're going to consider is the effect of high blood pressure. So we can increase our blood pressure if we do a few bad things in our lifestyles. So if we're a smoker, blood pressure can go up. If we eat too much salt or if we're overweight, then our blood pressure can increase. If we get stressed, that's one of those things that people always say, you're stressing me out, you're increasing my blood pressure. Again, stress is a cause of higher blood pressure. If you drink too much alcohol or eat a lot of saturated fats, those will also contribute to you generating higher blood pressure in your body. Now, if we do have high blood pressure and we want to lower it, then we can take regular exercise and we can eat a balanced diet to help reduce it. When we're thinking about high blood pressure, what we're referring to is a pressure of 140 over 90 or higher. Now, if you do have high blood pressure, then you're at an increased risk of having a heart attack, having a stroke, or damaging your kidneys. If we consider how smoking actually increases our blood pressure, then if we think about our cigarettes, tobacco smoke actually contains two important chemicals here carbon monoxide and nicotine. Now, nicotine is a stimulant, so that means it's going to increase our heart rate. The carbon monoxide is a chemical that's going to combine with the haemoglobin, which we find inside our red blood cells. And as a result of that, it stops those red blood cells carrying as much oxygen. So as a result, because our red blood cells are carrying less oxygen, then our heart is going to beat faster to try to make up for this and that can put our heart under strain. So when you pair up the carbon monoxide, joining with the haemoglobin, reducing the amount of oxygen they can carry in the red blood cells, and therefore the heart having to beat faster to try to compensate for this, along with the nicotine, which is stimulating our heart rate, making it beat faster, 
then we're at much greater risk of obviously an increased blood pressure as a result of those two factors coming together. The second factor that we need to understand how it actually influences our blood pressure is eating saturated fats. Now, when we think about our saturated fats that we take in during our normal diet, then that's going to be transported to our liver, which is going to make cholesterol from it. That cholesterol will be carried in the blood, and as it is, it will be deposited into artery walls. So as a result of that, our arteries become much narrower, and that restricts the flow of blood through them. So if you think about your arteries like a tube, and as we build up that cholesterol deposit in the walls, the tube gets much smaller. So we're still trying to force the same volume of blood through a much smaller space. As a result of that, our blood pressure is going to increase to try to force that blood through that narrow gap. Now, what we could well find as a result of these cholesterol deposits building up is that we may develop a blood clot or a thrombosis. Now, if we get that thrombosis developing in the coronary artery, which is the one that supplies our heart with all the oxygen and glucose it needs, then we could end up with a heart attack. If that thrombosis develops in an artery supplying our brain, then that's what causes a stroke. And obviously both of those can be very serious and may even lead to death. Finally, we just need to consider the opposite end of the spectrum, the problems of a low blood pressure. So if we're thinking about low blood pressure, then it can also be harmful. So if you suffer from low blood pressure, you're going to find you're more prone to feeling dizzy. You may faint more often. You'll have poor circulation. And in pretty extreme cases, we can also see organ failure, which, as you can imagine, could be incredibly serious for your health.